There are a few issues with this bike. They are minor. I want to preface that before I get started with this. I'm not complaining about the bike. I love it. It's great. Um, just a few things I've noticed that seem like they could be improved upon. It wouldn't be very difficult, honestly, to improve. So what I'm going to do is just bring this out here, give it a park and kind of walk through the bike and show you a few different things of what I think can be done to make this bike even better than it really already is, to be honest. Okay, so in today's video, I want to talk to you about the 2024 Wired Freedom and the three different things that if I could talk to the owner of the company that I could tell him would make this bike even better. Now, these are not big issues. They are not big ticket items. Uh, in fact, they aren't even a deal breaker at all in any way. They're just something that I think if they were corrected or changed, they would make the bike almost perfect. I haven't had any issues with the bike. One thing I have heard from people is that if you have an issue with say your forks or something bent, you need to get replaced uh, in shipping or whatnot. Some people have no problem seem to be able to get the parts out right away. And other people tend to have issues getting a hold of somebody or getting any replacement parts in a reasonable amount of time. I haven't had any problems. I guess I've just been lucky, but I did notice three things that if I could change on the 2024 Wired Freedom, I would change them. Now, number one, we'll start with up at the front, this light and fender combination here. Uh, it's a super cool LED light. I actually like the light. However, the way that it mounts and this system here and the fender, I don't like this mounting system. And there's a couple reasons why. One, if you look in the back here, you'll see that there is a nut on the back of this bolt and it tightens from the front here with an Allen key. This particular setup also has a light connected to the same exact mounting point. So one of the problems is when you go to tighten this, as you turn this with an Allen key, it will tend to, and I can show you guys if you'd like really quickly, I have the key with me, the Allen uh, set, is that when you turn that, it tends to turn the whole entire fender and it moves the light. Now you can obviously prevent this by putting uh, a crescent wrench on the other side here, but even while doing that, you still get some turn and, and that's really not the problem with it. I'm going to show you in a second what my bigger problem is. So as you can see here, if I turn this, the whole entire fender and light move and the fender will go so far and then the light will keep turning. So you can move it back. And I've tried tightening this with a, um, like I said, a crescent wrench on the back to get this as tight as possible. The problem is this is just a compression type of um, securing mount, I guess you could say. So there isn't any grooves or any way to lock this in once it gets tight. The only way to get it to stay in place is to just tighten the crap out of it until it basically feels like it's gonna break. So I'm not really a fan of that in the first place. Now, the second part to this setup here is that these Allens here, you have to tighten down, same problem, they're compression. There's no grooves or like you could imagine um, serrations kind of like this on a, on a bolt or on this pattern here so that when this uh, Allen gets tightened down, this compresses, but say there's threading in between these that lock in place, you know, at little adjustments. So if you wanted to adjust this down, you'd loosen it, adjust it down and then tighten it and that would hold it in place. As it is right now, this can all just be bent up and down. Now I have it really tight, so it stays pretty well in place, but when I first did this and tightened it the first couple times, it kept falling down. So one of the problems is this mounting bracket, I guess you could call it, tends to move forward unless you tighten these down as tight as you possibly can get them, which I've done and it seems to stay. But again, your light is connected with the fender. And so you're getting this strange movement where if you need to adjust your light or anything, or your light moves or wiggles or the fenders move, your whole setup is moving back and forth. And so it's just, to me, it's just not ideal. Same problem here. If they had uh, some sort of like serrations or uh, I don't even know what you would call them, I guess threading on each side of these mounts that they would lock together so that they couldn't move once it's pushed in. Just some thin little like grooves basically so that as you tighten it down, it locks into place and you could set it at different angles to get it perfectly symmetrical or right in the middle of where you need it for the clearance on these fenders. So that's problem number one that I'm not really a huge fan of is tightening this down. You can even see some of the paint has come off back there from me putting a crescent wrench to hold this in place. You could use a socket, a deep socket as well on that, I guess to hold that down. So I could tighten the crap out of it, but again, it's just gonna be this metal bracket hitting this metal bracket here. That's the only thing that keeps it in place. And 
even if you have a ton of friction, that's still eventually going to be able to move. It just doesn't seem like the best design. I wish that there was some way that this maybe came over the top and like prevented if, you know, this metal bracket went up and over, then it wouldn't be able to move because the metal bracket would hit on each side of this, uh, this fork, part of the fork here, where it wouldn't be able to go side to side like that or just something that would prevent it from moving because it's pretty tight, but like I said, it can still move. And then what you get is you get rubbing on your tire right here. You'll get an issue where you hear it go, you know, and problems like that. So that's problem number one. I don't really like the way that the light mounts and I don't like the way the fender and the light mount to the um, front fork. Now, problem number two has come up, I'd say two or three times maybe. And it's a not, again, not a huge deal, but the issue is if you have your rear chain ring set up to be, and it's not right now, but if you have it set up to be on this highest, uh, this highest ring right here, this chain is moved back closer to your tire, if you can imagine. So looking at it from the top, if, if you look at it from here, this is in closer. So this is closer to your tire. And what happens is I brought a uh, paper towel to kind of show you guys, but what can happen is if you go backwards, um, I'd actually kind of like to show you guys. Let me uh, set that up for a second so I can actually show you what it does. So what I'll do is I'll lift the wheel off the back and then I'm going to spin the tire and I'm going to put it in that highest gear or I guess you call it lowest gear, whatever you want to call it in the one gear, right? Okay. So it's, it's in the climbing gear. Okay. Now, so say you're going to be going up a hill or something like that. You have in the highest gear. Now that chain is really close to your tire. It's really close to that. Um, it's really close here to your, your box for your um, power distribution. Now, when it's like this, what you have is you have the chain trying to kind of slightly be off center with your front chain ring. So what happens is what I've noticed is if you go backwards like this, it's possible and it's not doing it right now, of course, but it's possible for that chain to come off of your front chain ring. And you can see it down at the bottom here. You can't really tell maybe at this angle, but it's really close to wanting to pop off of that front chain ring. When it does, it's a problem, obviously, okay? And so I'm gonna show you guys, I brought this paper towel to keep my fingers from getting greasy because tell you what, it's a freaking mess when it comes apart and you're trying to ride and it falls off. But let's say that it comes off like it did to me, that's what'll happen to you, okay? Now you have no uh, chain connected to your front pedals, but you still can use the throttle and you're able to go. So say this happens to you at a light, you're, you're spinning your pedals backwards or you do something and your chain comes off. Well, you can still use your motor to propel you home. Obviously you don't even need the chain for that, but you're going to have to get this chain back on here. And the easiest way that I've found to do it is, uh, unfortunately I usually use my finger. I don't have a paper towel like this when I'm doing it, but if you put your finger underneath this right here, it will extend that arm enough to where you can put it back on the guide, roll it around, and then let it go like that. And that will put it back in place to where it needs to be. That is the easiest way I've found. If you try to lift it from the top and get it back on by lifting it up here and getting on that front ring, and then you have to turn this, you can't turn this because your tire's touching. And if you turn it, it'll make it go and all that crap. So if your chain comes off your front chain ring, put your finger, unfortunately, if you don't have something you know to, to protect it, you're going to get grease all over your finger, but you know, it is what it is. At least you can get going again, push down on the front here. Like I did and lift it around and pull back out towards you as you do it. And that will bring it back on the guide. And this can go backwards with no problems. Your bike won't go anywhere. Your power won't be running no issues. So that's how you get your chain back on. If your chain comes off of the ch front chain ring. Now a fix for this, in my opinion, would be very easy. There's two different things I can think of to fix this a chain guide. So normally if you had a front derailleur, your derailleur up here would kind of protect it and keep it from coming off too far because it would be moving it between three different chain rings. So that would prevent that usually from going too far. It does happen even if you have multiple chain rings in a derailleur, but on one like this, all you would need in my opinion would be some sort of guide or something that would stick out maybe from this post here, or that would be attached down here that would protect that and prevent it from being able to go too far and fall off the chain ring. I have not had it go this way, obviously, because there's a little uh, guide on the front of the chain ring. Another option would be to put one of these 
covers like this guide right here on the front of the chain ring, put one on the back side so that it kind of has like a little protected, uh, another ring that goes around the back here to keep it stuck in between there. So it can't have the chance to hop over that and dislodge. The other thing I've seen on other bikes is a big piece of plastic that would go behind it. You could imagine behind here all the way across like see-through clear plastic that kind of sticks up a little bit and that would prevent it from being able to jump off of the chain ring as well it would have to be really close to it and it would spin with the chain ring it'd be part of the chain ring so you could just bolt it into the back side of the chain ring here and it would keep that from coming off of that ring so that would be in my opinion an easy fix that would prevent you from you know having your chain come off like that there you know at a random time where you're not ready and you have to get your hands all dirty to fix it just kind of annoying, but not necessarily that big of a deal. It can happen on any bike. I've had it happen twice on this bike, and each time I've had to get my fingers full of grease. As you can see, I got a little bit on here. Um, when you get it on your hands, it's like kind of tough to get off. You got to go wash it somewhere. It's just it's just a hassle, and then you got to you know throttle your bike and do all that with it. But it is fixable. Push down from the bottom right here and bring it around like that. One loop around. It'll get one finger greasy and oily, but it'll be easy, and you can go backwards even with the power on and you won't have any issues with the bike jumping forward or needing to say lift the bike up so that the back tires off the ground to go forward. Because if you go forward this way and you spin it, it's gonna make the bike go under power. Even if you turn it off, you still need to have either the bike lifted so the wheel can spin to be able to go forward. But if you go backwards, it's easy. So push down from the bottom and go around like that. Now, the third and final issue, again, these are not huge issues, but to me, this is something that kind of bothers me a lot uh, even though it's kind of silly I guess it's not really even broken or anything that's necessarily wrong with the bike but I am NOT a huge fan of this rear rack or front or rear fenders to be honest now the reason I say that is I'm gonna go right away as we finish this video and I'm gonna let you guys see and hear the noise that comes from the vibration of this motor as it goes up this rack and makes noise but also kind of I don't know it's like at certain frequencies at certain vibrations and at certain bumps you really hear this rack like make a lot of noise and it's not bad but it's just enough that it bothers me a lot I don't know why now the reason I'm considering removing this rack and honestly both front fenders is because I just don't like the look of it I don't like the way the rack and the fenders make the bike look. I think it would be much more sleek just having the center part of the frame and suspension and nothing else. Just tires, front and rear, maybe a light. And what I would need to do is, I would need to take this light here because it is wired, <laughs> get it? I'd take this light here because it's connected to the brakes and I actually like that. I would remove all of these zip ties, take the wire and reroute it up and mount it to the bottom of the seat. Now it's not at an ideal location for the light this is much better at the back of the bike but like i said i will never honestly use this rack i mean i guess i should never say never but i don't use racks when i go places i don't have pannier bags i don't do that type of stuff if i go anywhere and do anything like this what i'll do is i'll take a backpack and throw whatever i need in the back of the backpack and i prefer it that way because it puts the weight on me rather than on the back side of the bike if any of you guys have ridden sort of the older style e-bikes that have the, um, you know, the old battery right here, it kind of reminds you of it, how the shape is and everything. They used to mount the batteries back here when they were big and heavy, uh, even some lead acid batteries before they had lithium ion, they used to mount them back here and run it down into the motor. And it would just change the way the bike balanced and the way the bike rode. To me, once you started leaning, it really started to kind of pull you in one direction and having all that weight back there along with the motor already in the wheel, it's not for me. I'd rather have a backpack on me and have any of the weight I need on my back. So that's just a personal preference. Again, they did a really good job with this mounting system though. Um, and it is a, a fairly durable rack. If you do need this, fine, you know, it's great. For me, I'd rather not have all that extra metal and rattling going on with the type of you know riding that I do. And it looks like um, if I, I might actually remove this and make a separate video about that, but it looks fairly easy. I was just kind of taking a peek at it earlier. There's gonna be these two Allen bolts here. And then on the other side, the same thing. There's gonna be these two 
here so this one and this one remove those and this whole thing should come off other than there's one right underneath here behind the tire and there's one that mounts uh, on the fender right there to the back side of the rack now i think that that's where the noise is coming from is actually the fender i think the fender is what's making most of the noise when i ride not the rack itself i think the rack actually is pretty solid so what i might do is i might just take the fender off especially since the light is mounted to the rack and not the fender i might just remove the fender so i have to take the wheel off to get to it remove this bolt remove that bolt and take this rear fender off and i think i'm going to take this front fender off and i'm just going to mount the light directly to that front fork and if I like the look of that and I go out and I take it and it rides really well and I don't have any noises or vibrations or weird things going on, I might just leave it like that and leave that rack on there because, you know, it's a good rack. Like I said, it's it's pretty durable. It's It blends in, you know, as much, I guess, as a rack can blend in. But I'd like to see what it looks like without the fenders. I'm not a fan of the moving around. I'm not a fan of the noises and vibrations they make. In fact, I rarely ever use fenders when I ride a bike anyways, because I don't ride in the rain and I don't really like to ride in the mud or water too much. Every once in a while, you might have to run over some water. It is a bummer. You get a little splashed. So what? I mean, it's not the end of the world in my opinion. You can always slow down if there's, you know, some water you need to cross or something like that. You don't have to fly through it. And these fenders, like this front one here is not really gonna do that much anyways. I mean, it's pretty good, but you know, you could still get some splash up on the bottom side as that wheel turns, it can kick up water. This doesn't really go very far down anyways, but these metal fenders, I'm just, I'm not a fan of them. So like I said, I might take those two fenders off and then kind of see, you know, am I still getting any noise or vibration? I think that it's the mount of these fenders onto the rack. I think that's where the noise is coming in. I kind of wonder if they would have put like a rubber grommet in between there and right back here, if that would reduce some of that vibration because i think what's happening is the vibration is coming from the motor and it's going up the rear fork and it's going up this rack and then it's going into the thin fender and it's, it's making a rattle sound so what i'm going to do is like i said i'm going to remount my camera back to my chest mount i'm going to take my mic off here and i'm going to kind of hold it back so that as i ride away from here you guys can hear what i'm talking about when i ride on this type of terrain what kind of noise it makes as I go over the rocks and back up out of the lake. First I thought that was the motor, but I'm pretty sure it's the fender. Check out the structure. So check out this uh, structure here. It's all held together just with just gravity, really. A bunch of sticks all put together. <laughs> Pretty cool. Right here at the lake, Folsom Lake. Interesting how they used. You can see like this, this piece right here to kind of hold the weight. They use different wood pieces to kind of that is so cool how it's all holding it all together like that and they got one center piece center mass kind of holding it pretty cool like i said you guys if if you've been checking out these videos and you're not yet subscribed please subscribe hit that like button even share this video i'd really appreciate it definitely helps out the channel i hate to say it i know it's cliche but it is true Never underestimate the ingenuity of people with resources and too much time on their hands to make cool stuff like this. I do want to make some more videos going out and checking different areas around Folsom. There's some historic stuff with the gold rush and even some uh, different ravines and trenches that have been dug out for gold mining. So I want to um, possibly go and explore some of those areas all around town. 
So stay tuned for future videos, and we'll see you on the next one.